Hey, so what we're going to do today is talk to you about spurs and spur pads to help the new user and the experienced user make a better selection, you know, in regards to uh, composition, whether it's aluminum, steel, titanium, long po uh, points, short points, your different types of pads. And we're going to start with a set of aluminum irons, as they're called, would be the Bashlin aluminums. These are made in USA. Super high quality. A lot of folks in the utility industry use these. That's why they're still around. They're not the cheapest set of irons you can get, but they are extremely high quality. This particular set here is in pole gaff configuration. If you get the tree gaff version, it'll be an inch longer. And this is the Bashlands. Very, very, very lightweight, particularly if you couple them with an aluminum pad. You have a really light set of climbing spurs. So next what I'm going to show you here, this is the Climb Right aluminum spurs. Um, this particular model has the tree gaff. For those of you that want to get aluminum for the lightweight, this is going to be a, a little bit easier on the pocketbook. It's a two-piece construction design, so your vertical shank is embedded in this dovetail here on your lower iron. And they're aluminum, they're lightweight. These have the Buckingham straps on them and again the pole spur or tree spur one thing I, w I do want to mention with when you get these new you're going to want to sharpen the edge they, they do need to be touched up on the climb right spurs right now and that's your climb rights so next up um, from the spurs that we offer at Westbrook tree equipment this is from Klein um, made in USA super high quality been around for a long long time um, I do want to mention that this is an older set of mine from the training company. They're no longer blue, so the Klein irons are now black. Um, and the only reason I tell you that is just if you have an old set of irons and you look and you see they're blue, they're probably Klein's. That's an easy way to ID them. But the other way is if you look on the forward portion of the stirrup, it's really, really thin on the Klein's versus the Buckingham's are a bit thicker, more of a uniform thickness throughout. Um, advantages of the Klein's is it's got a really nice contoured stirrup here that kind of fits real well in your instep. Okay, And then it's hard to see on the pole spur here, but on the tree gaff, it goes out horizontally a little bit more before it goes down to the point, and a lot of folks really like that. And so that's your Klein pole gaffs. And then here is a set of Klein tree gaffs. And you can see you've got that extra inch of length and it's a lot easier to see how the hook comes out a little bit before it goes down towards the ground. And that's, you know, your tree and your pole. Everybody see that? All right, so what we're going to show you now is the offerings from Buckingham. And what I've got here is an older set of the pin style gaff, but this is a Buckingham steel spurs with your tree gaff. So you've got the two and three quarter inch gaff there, um, steel spurs, shank stirrup. This has got an old set of Bashland pads on it. So that's your Buckingham steel, and that's all also available in a tree gaff version. Um, and you can also, from Buckingham, not for our purposes in tree work, but for if you are climbing hard treated poles, there's also a true utility point, which is much more needle-like. Um, works really well in creosote treated poles, things of that nature. So that's your tree gaff, right? And remember earlier I was talking about this is this is the front of the iron. You see how that's pretty thick, whereas the Klein will be really thin, almost kind of a knife edge to a degree. So that's your steel spurs with tree gaff. And then these, this is a set of titanium Buckinghams with the pole gaff, just the standard pole spike and see, see how that's you know an inch shorter than the tree gaff that we had. The titaniums are super lightweight, um, really, really very, very durable. Th this pair is, uh, well, this pair is every bit of 14, 15 years old. Um, when I first got them, I was like, you know, titanium, is that going to be fragile? But super light, um, they were cheaper then, but they're still well worth the money. Excellent investment because it allows you to go with a, a bit bulkier, more comfortable pad and you make up with the weight savings on your irons. 
So that'd be your titaniums from Buckingham. All right, so just a quick review on your selecting your spurs. You have the choices of aluminum, which would be Bashlin and Climrite. You can get titanium and Buckingham. You can get steel in both Klein and Buckingham. Um, we could also special order steel Bashlins if that was really what you had your heart set on. As far as spurs go, the actual spikes, the, the gaff, we have a tree gaff, which is two and three quarters inches long. And then we have a pull spur, which is an inch shorter. So it's an inch and three quarters. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions. Guys think I'm climbing trees. I got to have tree gaffs. Um, in my experience, um, and this is something I picked up on from guys that knew a lot more than me years ago, unless you're in really thick bark, okay, and we're out here on the West Coast, we have trees that can have thick bark, but in the urban environment, most of the time, pull gaffs are going to work excellent. You're torquing your knees less, you're a lot more secure when you get in small diameter tops, and unless you're in truly thick bark, you don't need them. And you know, an experienced you know spur climber is going to be able to deal with a little bit of thick bark, say on a Douglas fir that's 100 years old. You get up there that 30 feet, you just got to have really good footwork, and then you're happy you've got pole gaffs on. Um, but there are tree species that the pole gaffs are, or the tree gaffs are going to be key. Redwoods, the bark is thick and soft. You know, um, shag bark hickories. You might like your you know tree gaffs better. Big cottonwoods. Sometimes tree gaffs are a lot better and it doesn't matter when you get in the small stuff anyway. But so keep that in mind, you know, most of the time, and particularly on the East Coast, we've got a lot of hardwoods. Um, the South, you know, the, the upper Northern Midwest states, you're gonna have trees that have hardwood and a little bit thinner bark and those pole gaffs are gonna be a lot better for you. So keep that in mind. And there's a lot of journeyman climbers that have two sets of spikes. They've got a set of tree gaffs and a set of pole gaffs. And what you'll find is the tree gaffs wind up getting kind of rusty because they're not getting used as much, okay? So what I'm going to show you now is pad selection. And there's a lot of pads to choose from. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start with basically what is the older pads, okay? And I'm going to be honest with you. So. Right here, these are brand new, but you know, some of you may have had to use these before. This is the L pads. Um, they're available from a couple different manufacturers. Back in the day, these were fine or they were great. It was, you know, was what was available. Um, you can see it's pretty pliable, okay? There's not a lot of padding there, all right? Um, Unless you're really lightweight and you're going to be on your hooks for a very short duration, this isn't your best choice. It's functional and it works, but there's better, better choices. And then kind of a, an evolution on that is the T-pad. Okay, so you can see you've got more leather, all right? Still have the vertical slot for your spur, and we're going to talk about that later. Um, the upgrade on this is you have this, you know, f felt about, you know, half an inch thick. So you've got quite a bit more padding than you did with the L pad, okay? Um, and still, you know, it's all leather. It's uh, quite a bit thicker leather than what's available on the L pad. So th this is a, an upgrade from the L pad. And if you're working, you know, again, small trees, you're on your irons for a short duration of time. And you're not working in a wet environment where this leather gets stretched out, and that's kind of what we'll talk about towards the end of this. So that's your T-pad, okay? And then the next evolution on that, you can get these from Weaver or Buckingham. We have the Weaver pads. These are called the Super Climbers. Uh, back in the day, they used to be called the Uke Pad, um, Super Pads. So now you've got two straps going around your calf. Still have the vertical tunnel for the shank of the irons. Um, so you got more padding. It's diffusing that force on your you know, lower leg over a broader area. And again, these are gonna be more comfortable than either of these. They are bulkier, they are bigger, okay? Um, and they work fine in dry environments and they're gonna give you more comfort while the leather is still in good shape, okay? 
and in wet environments these kind of go downhill a bit quicker all right so that's your choices on your leather soft pads okay and one thing I want to point out on these so in all three of these pads you see how your tunnel for your where your iron goes in the shank goes in those are all vertical and people always ask me what pad should I get and what I tell them is any pad that has the angled steel insert in it okay and we'll talk about why later all right so that's your leather soft pads and so one more of the what I consider soft spur pads option is the Buckingham velcro cushion wrap so you have a nice big wide velcro band for attaching the spur to your upper leg you know the upper part of your lower leg leather interior with a lot of really soft padding very comfortable um, these do have the same vertical pocket or tunnel for the shank on your spurs okay that just goes through and connects to your spur there okay these are lightweight it makes for a compact 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 set of irons when this is all stowed in your spur bag and so that's the velcro cushion wraps now there's also the buckingham steel cushion wrap so it looks just like these okay keep that in mind but it has the angled steel insert okay okay so what i'm going to show you now is um what's referred to as cadillac pads um we used to call them aluminum cups you know years ago and this is kind of you know these have been around quite a while okay and remember earlier i was talking about angled inserts well if you look at the pair of opsoles here these are what everybody calls cadillac pads see how there's a bit of an angle that's not totally horizontal okay that's a plus um these pads the iron is held in place with one strap all right you've got really thick neoprene padding here um, they're very lightweight they are really comfortable um, one thing you do want to watch for especially if you work in a hot climate is if you have you know your trousers get kind of some folds and wrinkles in them and that's up against there when you're sweating like crazy because it's 95 degrees and 98 percent humidity you can kind of rub your shins raw so it helps to either have long socks um, or the reason why a lot of the guys wear the tall lineman's boots is it does protect your legs from the chafing and scraping and whatnot but you want to make sure that your trousers are kind of flat and smooth inside of there because it will start to rub you raw especially if you're up on your irons for five or six hours on a big removal okay so that is the standard width or standard cup on the aluminum cadillac pads and what i have here this is an old pair of mallory's but the opsols it's the same thing that's your narrow cup and does everybody see how much narrower that is so if you have really small legs um, this is going to be the better option for you because you can't bend this aluminum like you can with the steel inserts to form it to your leg so that'd be your narrow and that'd be your regular everybody see that so that's your aluminum cadillac pads all right they've been around for a long time these mallory's are off of the first pair of spurs i bought in 88 okay and they're they don't even I can't even know you can find these anymore so the next set of aluminum pads are from climb right these are really lightweight they attach with velcro okay extremely lightweight and for lighter climbers and um, where you're not gonna be in great big trees for a long time these are a good choice okay they're really lightweight but what some bigger folks, you know, um, if you're over 200 pounds, you're going to start to feel the edge there. So again, it's a good choice for smaller climbers and smaller trees, right? That's the climb right. And you couple these on the climb right aluminum spurs, and you've got a really light spur set. I mean, these weigh next to nothing. It's, you know, pretty thin aluminum stock here and just a lightweight Velcro band with a really light ribbed to give you a little bit of ventilation interior pad. That's your climb right aluminums. All right, so now what we're gonna talk about is the spur pads that have the angled steel insert, and it gives you support 
The other big thing that it does, see how it orients your iron? That, that's a big factor when you're in the tree, and we're gonna talk about that after this. So that's really where the comfort of these pads comes in. Not only do you have that steel insert in here to give rigidity, you still have the padding, all right? It's just a simple band of leather with the felt on it, one strap holding in place. This is what we moved to to put into our spur kits and our entry level spur kits. For the money, this is an excellent value. You're getting a set of pads that you can use for years. They're gonna be very comfortable and it's at a nominal price increase over your T-pads. And a lot more comfortable, trust me. Um, there's also, we used to have these, they were the Bashlin stiff wraps, effectively the same setup, okay? And again, does everybody see that, how that angled steel insert works? And we'll get in the tree and kind of show you, attempt to show you the difference. So then next, remember we had the Buckingham cushion wraps? So this is the Weaver steel cushion wraps, and the Buckinghams are similar. They're just a different leather, um, black instead of the brown. But it's the same thing. You have the Velcro to attach it to your leg. All right. You can bend your steel insert if need be to kind of form it to your leg. And that's gonna do the same thing. That's holding that spur, the shank of that iron in the direction it wants to move to when you're on the tree anyway. So now it's held in a much more secure position. These are extremely comfortable, fairly compact, easy to put on and off. Um, big favorite with a lot of folks. All right, so what I got here is from Buckingham. This is the big buck pads. Angled steel insert, remember we are talking about that, it's a good thing. Nice, wide, big pad to diffuse the pressure on your lower leg. These run, secure the climber with two straps. Really good choice, good value. That's the big bucks, okay? And then we've got the big buck Velcros. All right, same thing, angled steel insert. Puts the spur in the perfect operating position. Nice, wide Velcro to attach it and secure it to your lower leg. These are the Buckingham Big Buck Velcro. Excellent pad, works really well. Same kind of deal going, we've got the angled steel insert, big wide leather that's padded, and they've got a foam in there that dries really quick and is ventilated, so on those hot sweaty days, these are gonna dry out quite a bit quicker than your traditional felt padding is going to. The same deal as you know a lot of the other Velcro cushion wraps. You've got the big wide Velcro band, super easy to adjust, really comfortable, excellent set of pads. That's the Klein Hydrocools. Gonna talk to you about some uh, little add-on accessories that you could get if you felt like you needed them for your spurs. Um, these, kind of funny looking, but they're actually handy. Every now and then in my career, I'd have, for whatever reason, my iron would rub on my ankle bone, and it kind of hurt. So I would cut up a sleeping pad and tape it to the iron. Well, these you can just slide right on your iron, and it gives you a little bit of padding right there if that was happening. Um, it happens with some folks. A lot of times it's attributed to the wear on your pad, the types of pads that you have, but that's an option. The next up, you know, we were talking about how those old style leather L pads didn't have much padding. This is something that you could actually, if you chose to, put this right on your leg. It's a little rigid. It's got a little bit more padding there to kind of augment um, the downsides of those L pads. And these are just an add on wrap pad, goes right on each leg. And the other thing we have here, this is a Buckingham foot plate. It's only gonna work with the Buckingham spurs because that stirrup is what fits in there. Um, it's kind of were made for linemen because they'll be on those poles, you know, oftentimes working for a long time. And if they don't have the pegs to stand on, re regardless of what boots you're wearing, spurs are going to hurt after a while. Uh, for those of you that have been at big removals for several hours, spurs don't tickle. You know, they're not really good for humans to wear. 
for a duration of time. So this having this foot plate on there, now more of your weight is going over a larger area, taking pressure off of your instep. It can add comfort. Now you're gonna give up mobility because your foot can't flex anymore. And even though that has the rubber on there, it's not the same as standing on a branch or something on just the sole of your foot. But that's your Buckingham steel foot plates as an add-on to your spurs. All right, so uh, one quick thing is um, you'll see all the all the spurs the, on the shank, there's this sleeve and it's adjustable for height. So textbook like setup for your spur pads is you want the pad, if you come up the front of your tibia fibia here, you feel your kneecap, you come down, that's like the top of your shin. You want the pad to be about two fingers below the top of your shin bone. Now, depending on the pad, you can go up or down, but that's a good starting place to adjust the height of your pads on your spurs. Because if you're too low, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Obviously, if it's too high, it's gonna be digging into your kneecap. So for me, that's just about right. I'm actually like a finger and a half, but it's, it's okay. And you don't want your lower strap so tight that it's crushing the arch of your foot because that'll get old real quick. So we're talking about the straight tunnels on the old style leather soft pads and then the angled steel insert. So, you know, my knees aren't locked, but so right here, this would be a textbook work position. I'm pushing off around a wood or whatever, but it, you know, I'll take one leg out here and you can see how will that the spurs angled backwards and kind of the bottom of the spurs going forward when we're climbing the tree with soft pads that's where that shank is going to rotate to and it starts to hurt after a while because it's digging in right forward to your calf muscle right into your shin bone and it aches after weight the ways you never feel that if you have the angled steel inserts i mean literally this type of pad you know hours on a big removal so that's that so what I want to kind of show you, and it's going to be hard, um, is the difference where the tree spikes don't shine, I guess. Um, obviously in thick bark trees, it's going to be great. You're going to need them, um, really deep soft bark. So here I'm in this small big leaf maple and just, you know, I'm on my lifeline here, but it's, um, I'm precariously perched because I'm on just this point that's sticking out quite a ways from my foot actually. So, you know, it's not as stable. Like if I come off of my climb system, I mean, this is, this is kind of wobbly. So, you know, in the negative, I got more pressure going down on my spurs, but when I come up here in the neutral on this really small smooth bark stem, these tree gaffs are really torquing on my knees and they're just not as stable, okay? so. You know where that's gonna come into play let's say this was a close quarters removal this is a really small tree but we need to go get up there into wood you know where we're talking three four inches diameter these are going to be really wobbly for even an experienced climber okay so you know hopefully you guys can see uh like how far you know i'm standing on that spur how far away from the trunk my foot is. And that's, that's wobbly, okay? So, here I got pull spikes on. Much more secure, a lot surer footed. Um, even when you get like this small a diameter, let's say. You know, we're still stable on our feet, okay? This is, you know, allows us to get up into smaller tops. And even on a top, you know, or a stem this little, your heel and the ball of your foot is closer to the trunk. So it actually gives you a little bit more stability. So, I mean, pole spurs are my first pick. 
most of the time. It has to be a truly thick bark, large tree to really even want to wear the, the tree spurs. And then, you know, when you get up into your smaller tops on a removal, the tree gaffs are just kind of awkward compared to your pole gaff. 